All right, welcome everybody uh, to the FY 2017-2022 proposed Highway Improvement Program webinar. Um, my name is Chris, I'll be your host. We'll be uh, starting off today talking about IDOT, uh, just kind of a brief overview of what we do here at IDOT, uh, followed by an overview of the FY 17-22 uh, proposed Highway Improvement Program, how we go about developing that program, uh, some information about the projects that are within the 1722 program, talk about performance measures, and then uh, hear from you about uh, what projects in your community take priority, and then also performance measures for next year's program, which you guys think we should be doing for performance measures. Uh, comments are due Wednesday, November 30th, 2016. Um, if you're attending the webinar uh, live, there should be a handout in your tab. Uh, which will give you access to the comment form for this year, along with access to the interactive map showing the needs and also the MYP program itself, so you can actually look through and see what projects are happening in your community as the webinar is going on. Better uh, prepare yourself for questions after the brief presentation. Um, also on there should be the actual uh, web address to the MYP as it's written in PDF form. There are stagnant maps at the end of each um, chapter on the drop down when you get to the website, but the interactive map, which is a hyperlink on there, I think is uh, very useful. So let's, uh, let's begin. IDOT's mission statement, uh, basically the Illinois Department of Transportation is here to provide safe, cost-effective transportation for Illinois in ways that enhance the quality of life, promote economic prosperity, and demonstrate a respect for the environment. Illinois, it's a, it's a big state. Uh, the nation's third largest interstate system, so you can see there, got about 16,000 miles of uh, state-maintained roads. That includes 2,200 miles of interstate highways and 7,850 state-maintained bridges. That equals out to be about 146,900 centerline miles. IDOT represents about 11% of the total state and local roads in Illinois, uh, but we carry about 55 of the state vehicle miles traveled. This is an interesting slide here. This is our It Takes Time brochure, which you can get at any of the district offices. It goes into a little better detail on how long a project takes to get from funding all the way until construction. Um, sometimes you see a lot of construction projects that go uh, what seems like forever, and I can tell you that uh, it takes a little bit of time, as the brochure explains. So uh, feel free to screenshot this, or when the recording is up, take a look at it, or go to your local headquarters and grab a copy. Uh, be very beneficial to understanding how exactly a project goes from funding to uh, being created. Now, now we're going to jump into the development of the MYP, how exactly we select the projects, and uh, why it's important to have an MYP. Uh, the de we develop this and refine it annually, so it's, uh, it's not a stagnant document. It'll be updated and has probably already been updated from the form version that you see online. It's a six-year program cycle, so every uh, it's, you know, six years of funding. Uh, process of developing the MYP, uh, we identify the pavement and structure conditions across the state. That's very important to figuring out what is priority. Uh, revenue estimates from the federal and state sources are used uh, for the basic allocation to the districts. Districts then update cost estimates for the projects. The districts develop, prioritize, and submit candidate projects for the MYP to central office. Then the MYP is fiscally constrained. Once this is all completed within IDOT, we communicate that program to the General Assembly, industry, public, and our other stakeholders, and that's what brings us here today, to ask for your input in the 17 to 22 program. So why do we develop the MYP? Well, uh, we need to look at it from a long-term investment standpoint. Uh, we can't just slap uh, asphalt down on the road and call it good where there's potholes. Uh, we need to make sure that we're looking for the long-term investment. Also, this is mandated by the Illinois uh, state. Um, we also have to look at the current program goals and refine by developing uh, the 2017 Long Range Transportation Plan. We are currently in the uh, Bureau of Planning developing the Long Range Transportation Plan. Uh, we need to make sure that the goals align with that, and MYP has always had goals of understanding, um, preserving and maintaining the existing system, modernizing our highway system, and strategic expansion and new capacity to mitigate congestion. Uh, we have to explain how our projects are prioritized and definitely be transparent in proposed improvements. 
very important that we develop this for the long term of Illinois' roads and their conditions. So what does the program have for 17 to 22? We have over $11 billion in funding for this program and more than $2.02 billion in just FY17 alone. The FY17 to 22 program supports uh, you know, 2,500 bridges or so, uh, excuse me, miles of highway maintained. 105 bridges will be uh, either replaced or rehabilitated. We got 431 million uh, in local benefits programs that will, uh, will help with local roads and support economic development. So uh, 431 goes to the locals of our program. We have uh, safety improvements, uh, railway crossings that are being done throughout the state. We target safety improvements along identified fatal and severe crash locations. Uh, lastly, we enhance public right-of-way accessibility. These are all kind of overviews of what we do for the MYP. Here we have a really nice bar chart. Uh, this here shows the local roads and state funding, uh, breaking it down by colors and uh, how tall they are, which is important. So what's new for this year? As you can see, there are uh, refinements to the program model. So we're kind of adjusting how things are prioritized and set in the plan, resulting in a more realistic, physical, uh, fiscally constrained program. Uh, use of performance, performance measures to help prioritize expansion projects, uh, beginning with, with the development of an asset management plan and also an all hazards plan. Safer roads is very important. In 2015, there were 998 roadway fatalities in Illinois. As you can see there, 46% came from state routes, 54% occurred on local roads. More than half involved vehicles driving off the road. Nearly a quarter of the fatalities were at intersections, and weekend fatalities accounted for almost half of all severe crashes. 50% of the fatalities were pedestrian, and the majority, overwhelmingly, are younger drivers, 15 to 20, and 65 plus. To address this, IDOT is working to better integrate safety data into their design phase. Priorities of the MYP are kind of broken down into uh, four main categories. We've got system maintenance, which is basically keeping things up in good working conditions so that everybody in the motoring public can get to and fro in a safe manner. Along with that is bridge maintenance. Can't have bridges failing. So keeping the bridges that we have current uh, in the inventory you know, navigable and, and properly maintained is, is the two main pillars, the, the maintenance of the system and then the bridges. Um, kind of going into the next one, congestion mitigation in major areas, urban areas where there's bottlenecks and things of that nature, reducing the effects of those bottlenecks. Uh, that is also mandated by federal law uh, in certain areas that are in non-attainment. And then finally, when uh, the opportunity presents itself for new roads and other projects to increase success, access, and promote economic development, system expansion is reviewed and uh, deemed where necessary. Again, another bar chart for you. This one uh, breaks the four categories that we just talked about down, uh, showing the amount in system maintenance, bridge maintenance, congestion mitigation, system expansion. It's represented in billions. So where does the funding come from? Well. Federal funds, uh, the Fixing America Surface Transportation Act, or FAST Act, provided five years of uh, predictable revenue, a uh, new freight program that is uh, also in, in the legislation. Performance management was mandated within the legislation, and we refocused and on performance and funding in the national highway system. It's paid for through the gas tax on the, on the uh, federal level, which is currently 18.4 per gallon, 24.4 for diesel. Also playing a factor is the uh, Illinois state funds. Uh, Illinois funds this through two, two different um, mechanisms, the motor fuel tax, which is 19 cents per gallon, uh, motor vehicle registration, which is around uh, $101 per year per registered vehicle. Uh, in 2015, vehicle miles traveled was up nationwide. Uh, part of the reason for this is that lower fuel, pri lower fuel prices, mild winters, and lower unemployment made it easier to travel this summer out on the Illinois roads. This is a little bit of a crazy graph, but I think it's pretty interesting to show uh, the price of a gallon of gasoline is represented by the green line there. Uh, as you can see, a uh, gallon of gasoline by the darker blue, and then very, very small at the bottom you can see how much the federal 
uh, motor fuel tax and state motor fuel tax has increased over that same period of time. Uh, it's my understanding that the federal motor fuel tax has not changed in 2003. Or excuse me, 1994. Projects prioritization. Uh, developing the program, how does IDOT characterize prioritization of projects in included in the MYP? Well, as we talked earlier, there's those four major categories. Um, we've really got to maintain the current system with the funding that we had. If we had more funding, we could definitely improve system expansion and reduce congestion where, where is possible. Uh, but really keeping the system in safe working order is, is probably the top two there and then congestion and system expansion. What type of projects are included in the MYP? Well, road surfacing, rehabilitation, bridge maintenance and rehabilitation, replacement, operational improvements, safety, which is increasingly becoming a, a priority with the condition of our system, and then highway capacity, congestion mitigation, we'll round those out. Uh, performance measures today, uh, it's a tiered approach. Uh, evaluate projects based on the uh, ADT or average daily traffic. Um, as you can see, their past program goals, we had a 90% uh, for state roads, 93% for uh, bridges to be acceptable. Uh, presently, the acceptable condition is at 79% for the state roads, 92% for bridges. Uh, if we were to not receive any additional funds, including um, what we see from the federal level, without additional funds in FY22, only 61% of the state roads will be acceptable, 86% uh, of the bridges will be acceptable. These are projected figures, of course. So bridge and pavement prioritization. For a long time, the department has developed an asset management plan. Uh, this will help. Uh, we're going to be able to collect data to develop a plan to minimize, in, or excuse me, maximize investment on pavement and bridges, uh, using this data to make strategic investments to expand the life of pavement and bridges. Uh, this will. Um, this is a deviation from the worst, uh, worst first methodology currently used and will uh, identify mid-level improvements that will result in long lifespan for facilities. So that's good that we are not just waiting for things to fall into the ocean or into the, into the uh, water. Here we go. All right, goal to make our financial uh, resources and infrastructure last longer, which is what it should be. Ocean. There's no oceans in Illinois, by the way. Bridge improvements, uh, you've got some big big language for you here. Uh, structurally deficient, I know that sounds scary, but it does not mean that the bridge is unsafe. It strictly means that there are components of the bridge that must be monitored, uh, inspected, and repaired as, as they are seen. Functional obsolete is that the functional uh, integrity of the bridge is still okay, it's just that the lanes width, uh, load, carrying capacity, vertical clearance and approach, roadway alignments are just not up to standards currently. Does not mean that the bridge is going to fail. We have to classify bridges like that in order to figure out which ones we're going to improve and when. Uh, operational improvements, locations based on known traffic issues, uh, departmental data and information from the actual boots on the ground is what kind of helps with that. County and local agencies input through the MYPs or excuse me, the MPOs and other uh, county agencies and, and cities are, are very important in how we figure out where to make these improvements. Uh, we probably, uh, property damage and crash history is also factored into the operational improvements. Congestion mitigation to improve air quality. Uh, this is to reduce the volatile organic compounds found. Uh, there's only two areas in Illinois that receive what they call CMAC funding, congestion mitigation air quality. That's in the Chicagoland area and then uh, East St. Louis going into the greater St. Louis area. Um, we want to improve mobility also with our operational improvements, traffic signal improvements, adding turn lanes where necessary, synchronizing the traffic signals, and then of course uh, intelligent transportation systems, also known as ITS. You see those big signboards on the interstate to let you know how long it's going to take when you're in Chicago to get downtown or just alert you of certain things that may be going on. That's just one small component of ITS and its importance uh, on our operations. More on operational improvements, uh, interchange rehabilitation and construction, uh, changes in travel patterns, uh, definitely a, you know back up into mainland uh, expressways. We have to take a look at where and how we're going to go about doing that. Uh, access needs, emergency vehicle response, regional uh, development, and economic development opportunities are extremely important in what we decide 
during our operational improvements, we want to make sure that economic development is high up on the, on the list. Capacity improvements, it gets a little stickier. Uh, obviously, we talked about how much expansion is going on uh, in the program. We saw that was a small amount. It takes, it takes a rigorous approach to looking at this. Some things that we refer to as ad lane projects, we look at the annual ADT, which is something we spoke on earlier. A uh, number of existing lanes uh, on the facility. Congestion-related crashes, something that's a, a high priority. Uh, regional system needs, county and local agency priorities. We want to be an intermodal transportation system, so we have to address intermodal transportation needs as they come up. Of course, economic opportunity, which we spoke on, local and community support, and legislative support, are just a few of the things needed uh, that we factor in for cat capacity improvement. Excuse me. Now we're just going to briefly go over each of the districts and some of the major improvements that they have planned. Uh, this is not in any way, shape, or form all of the projects. All the projects can be listed on the hyperlink that uh, we spoke to in the handout that has the actual MIP, and then you can see that in a visual representation um, on the integrated maps. So District 1, uh, I-55 currently handles 1,700 vehicles a day and growing. That number should be 250,000 anticipated by uh, through it is congested up to 10 hours a day on average and carries about 50% of all the freight going in and out of Chicago. In response, IDOT announced the issue of a request for information or an RFI in September to assist the development of a plan leveraged by private investment through a private-public partnership or a P3 to build a managed lane from I-355 to the interchange at I-90 and 94. The project would add a tolled express lane to expressways existing median. While managed lanes have successfully had been successful in other states as P3s, the I-55 project would be the first in Illinois. The project is estimated at $425 million for construction. Also, the Jane Byrne intersection, otherwise known as the Circle Interchange, is ready for an upgrade or a re rebuild, I should say. As originally built in the 50s and early 60s, this interchange connected Interstate 90, 94, and 92, consistently ranked as one of the nation's worst bottlenecks. Over 400,000 vehicles travel this interchange every day, including 33K of trucks. The 600 million interchange construction is anticipated to be completed in 2020, providing uh, improvements for safety, traffic flow, and travel time. District 2, the Illinois Department of Transportation and Iowa DOT are working closely to replace the I-74 bridge over the Mississippi and the Quad Cities. IDOT has committed $220 million in FY17-22 for construction and lighting on the center section of the new bridge. $27.5 million is programmed in FY17 alone. On the Illinois side, five miles of additional lanes, a new bridge, bridge replacement, reconstruction, retaining walls, construction engineering, building demolishment, and utility adjustments for connecting the Mississippi River Bridge to existing Interstate 74 alignment are programmed during the FY17-22 program at a cost of 254, excuse me, 258.4 million. That wasn't confusing enough. An additional 80, excuse me, 800,000 is programmed for FY17 to rehabilitate the existing bridge to keep it operational until the new bridge is completed. As you can see on the slide, there's the plans and an artist rendering of the new bridge. District 3, Illinois 178 over the Mississippi. Mississippi's getting a lot of action in the program, guys. Uh, over the Mississippi River at uh, Utica. All right, am I saying that right? Utica? Okay. All right, it's the Illinois River. It says Illinois River on the slide, guys. We're going to go with the Illinois River. A new bridge and construction engineering is programmed for FY17 at a cost of $32.5 million. The current bridge uh, was built in 1962. I don't live there. I'm sorry, folks of Utica. It's definitely Illinois River. Now that I look at the picture. US 34 from East uh, Elden Road to the center of to Center Parkway in Yorkville is getting a major makeover. Reconstruction, construction, and additional lanes for 2.1 miles, a bridge replacement, culvert replacement, utility adjustment, construction engineering, a program for FY17 at a cost of $23.7 million. Got pictures there. District 4, 
Uh, US uh, 150 War Memorial Drive eastbound over the Illinois River. Uh, this project is north of downtown Peoria and includes bridge replacement, land acquisition, utility adjustments, construction engineering, and railroad flagger for programmed uh, during the 17 to 22 at about 188.1 million. District 5. Uh, one of the major downstate interchanges that IDOT on the IDOT system is I-70, is I-57 and I-74 in Champaign County. This interchange is slated for reconstruction and will include new bridges, utility adjustments, land acquisition, uh, construction engineering, and all these activities are programmed between uh, 2017 and 22, cost of 74.3 million. So 74.3 million for all those. Uh, portions. This should provide a more effective uh, freight movement through the through the state and through the area. 5.5 is being programmed in uh, 2017 alone. Second project on there is the US 50 Illinois 9, uh, just off Interstate 74 to Royal Point Drive. Received resurfacing on 12.1 miles. Some great ADA improvements. This is programmed during the 18 to 22 program. Uh, it'll be a cost of 7.9 million. You see the highlighted route on the map. It's a good looking map. I know the guy who did it. District 6, uh, US 54, Mississippi. There we are, Mississippi River Bridge over Louisiana. I knew there was another Mississippi. This is in uh, Missouri and Pike County. Um, we will be replacing, including uh, engineering for contract plans, land act, um, utility adjustments, uh, reimbursement to Missouri and ownership consultant activities to facilitate construction requirements are programmed during the 17 to 22 uh, program at a cost of 27.8 million. Uh, 2.8 of this program uh, is going to happen in FY17 and it's worth noting that Illinois and Missouri received uh, 10 million in federal TIGER money uh, for this project. Also happening in District 6, south of Springfield and uh, through Springfield on I-55, I-55 and the 72 We'll have uh, additional lanes, reconstruction, interchange, reconstruction around Springfield engineering. Uh, we'll have uh, contract plans for the reconstruction on the mainline pavement, interchange, reconstruction, additional lanes for each direction on I-55. This is going to get complicated, guys. On I-55 from south of 6th Street interchange all the way up to the Sherman interchange. On I-72 from Illinois 4 to in Interstate 55 south of Springfield and on I-72 from I-55 east of Springfield to old US-36, a program during the 2018 to 22 at an estimated cost of $25 million. District 7. District 7, uh, we got I-70 from the abandoned railroad bridge to Almont in Little Wabash, Little, Little Wabash River, that's a lot to say, I guess, west of Effingham. This improvement will include a rumbleization overlay on 7.1 miles, a new bridge deck, bridge repair, bridge, excuse me, ramp repair, and culvert rehabilitation and repair are programmed during the 18 to 22 period at a cost of 30.9 million. District 8, down there near St. Louis, if you guys aren't familiar, uh, we've got the MLK bridge that heads into St. Louis proper. The MLK bridge ramps over Interstate 55 and 64 westbound. Missouri Avenue relocation of Illinois 3 and terminals of railroad and Union Pacific Rails in East St. Louis, uh, 0.7 miles east of the Mississippi River. Uh, this project is programmed uh, between the 17 and 22 period at a cost of 34.7 million with 2.5 being spent in FY17. District 9, our last district, not the Hunger Games. All right, I-57 northbound uh, from about a half a mile north of Illinois, 146 to I-24 in Union and Johnson County. Uh, reconstruction on 12.7 miles of the northbound lanes is programmed during the 2018 to 22 program period, a cost of 19.2 million, so that's 19.2 million for that project. Again, we got a map, really nice IRS picture. All right, performance measures. Ensuring that our invest in, 
with our limited resources is wise. I agree with that. Uh, future performance measures. Uh, we're going to prioritize uh, maintenance on facilities that are on the national highway system due to financial, or excuse me, federal guidance that were just more emphasis on the national highway system. Uh, we need to make data-driven decisions, prioritize investment, ensure that we are uh, heavily using, that the heavily used facilities remain in a state of good repair. So what we've heard, uh, currently the state uh, of our infrastructure is, is, is really not acceptable. Our state and local roads and bridges are really deteriorating at a fast rate. Safety is growing, as we talked about earlier, as an area of concern, which it, it shouldn't be in a system that's in good repair. I mean, obviously safety is always important, but the failing uh, system that we have right now or soon is the reason why that's become more of an emphasis. Uh, travel times are unreliable. Uh, it's a daily struggle to move people and goods efficiently. Uh, infrastructure concerns should be multimodal uh, as we get into uh, the baby boomers increasing in age and then the, the millennials that are taking more public transportation, investing uh, in our transit, paratransit, passenger rail, uh, aeronautics, waterways and ports, intermodal facilities, bike and pedestrian facilities is going to play an important role in helping our residents, workers uh, keep in good contact with another and get to and fro. A greater investment is needed. Uh, we talked about, we saw um, the slide that talked about how much the bridges and roads would be in bad repair in 2022. Should no uh, future investment or further investment be added, uh, that may be coming, at, you know, let's say if the feds were to pass, the federal government were to pass uh, more funding, or if the state were to pass the capital bill, we might be able to, uh, you know, obviously have greater investment. in in our current uh, system, but without something like that, we, we really could be in a situation where things are not looking good. IDOT has room to improve on project development and collaboration with our partners. We understand that. Uh, we have a lot to do with local agencies and the metropolitan planning organizations to collaborate on data and other bits of information. So where are we going? Um, we are recon uh, reconstruct initially to be more uh, responsive and based on what we do, which is uh, project development, project implementation, we, excuse me, restructured internally. I've been reading too much. Okay, so internally at IDOT we've kind of developed two areas. We've got a project development, a project implementation, which is different. Uh, used to all be kind of under the same shop. This allows for um, kind of a smooth transition from development into implementation. Focus on maintenance of existing assets. As we talked about earlier, maintenance is a key component of our current program for FY17 to 22. We're exploring ways IDOT can add value to project selection and project implementation. Performance measures. Uh, so we want to identify and compare benefits uh, for different projects, improve transparency and accountability. Um, that's basically the heart of performance measures. Uh, being able to give factual data as to why things are being uh, either refurbished, maintained, or rebuilt, maybe even ad lanes, we have to have the information to be able to prove why that's happening. Uh, fund projects that improve uh, the best return on investment. So we want to make sure that we're spending wisely, which seems important. Invest our limited resources wisely. Performance measures and expansion projects. Um, this will help us meet our long-term goals um, on expansion projects. Uh, how, how can transportation improvement be leveraged to meet local and state goals? Well, uh, proposed goals that we have are accessibility, economic um, competitiveness, livability, safety, and system performance. Uh, we think that having uh, more investment and smarter investment will help to bring all those goals um, up. Performance measures on, performance measures on expansion projects. Presently, uh, we are evaluating measures, asking for feedback on the goals. Um, present the initial outcomes, presenting the initial outcomes to local stakeholders. Um, the result will be monitored and adjusted based on uh, experiences and input from the stakeholders. So this is going to be a living thing. These performance measures will not simply be something we write down and have that be the end-all, be-all. We hope to continue to refine those, 
make it a uh, continual process. Current timeline for the process as we see it now uh, is as we see it on the screen. Okay. Uh, resources for you. Uh, see those hyperlinks on the screen there. Also, we have the handout. Uh, for the record, is an annual um, past year program accomplishments, which can be downloaded. Uh, that just gives you an idea of what we actually got accomplished during the course of the last year. I think it's an important document. You can kind of compare that uh, to past MYPs. Also, have the 17 to 22 proposed highway improvement program. There's a long hyperlink there. Also, we had the handout. Um, you're able to use either one. Provide feedback with the comment. That's a shorter URL for the comment form that you should have found in your handout. We'd like to thank you for attending. Uh, please stand by for the comment period or log on to the hyperlink you see there. And add your comments to the comment form. Copy to the MYP can be found at following location. We will now open it up for questions. We have with us all of the program engineers from each of the districts. We have uh, the public who hopefully has been asking questions in the chat pod or communications or comments or whatever it's called. Um, I've been told I'm not supposed to touch anything on the screen. So we're going to wait momentarily here while we get those questions organized. We are ready for questions. We are ready for questions. The first question is, with all of the bridge and road work plans for FY 2017, will any MST funds for municipalities be affected? Will municipalities still be getting their share of the MST funds? And we have people from Bureau of Programming here to answer that for us. No, the MST funds will not be affected. Funds to the MST program will not be affected. Okay, thank you. The second question uh, is regarding the uh, three, I don't know if it's Illinois 336 bypass around Macomb. We have Teresa from the district. Give me one second, Teresa. Teresa, if you mind handling that question, it is, if the state of Illinois and IDOT are strapped for funds, why are they building the 336 bypass around Macomb? While we wait for Teresa to uh, become available, we'll move on to the next question. This is, who decides if a DAG is established for a local project? Um, let me clarify what a DAG is. In the meantime, we'll move on to the next question which is one for Brian Carlson in District 1. That is, will Illinois 59 Stern projects begin in District 1? The Illinois 59 at Stearns Road project is a CMAC project, and the current schedule for that, I believe, is early in 2017 for construction. I can verify that very quickly here. Yes, 59 at Stearns Road. Um, we are targeting contract plan preparation and uh, land acquisition for early in calendar year 17. However, the funding is not currently available in our FY17 annual program. The funding is identified in the multi-year program. But um, this is a strategy that we often use um, to have projects uh, quote unquote shovel ready. So even though the funding is not currently in place, we um, ready more projects than we have funding available for so that if we are fortunate to uh, receive good bids on other projects and have available resources to advance projects, this would be a project that would be uh, hopefully available under that scenario. 
Um, or um, oftentimes we have projects that for other various reasons do not make their scheduled contract letting date for reasons such as uh, delays in land acquisition or uh, permitting or other such uh, project readiness items. Uh, so this gives us the flexibility to move projects in and out so that we maximize the use of our available resources. So we're targeting it for early 17 uh, contingent upon funding availability. Thank you. Next question we have are what are the plans for expanding the U.S. Route 50 project from Indiana to St. Louis? Let me give me a second to unmute the correct person. The District 8 region, which is the St. Louis metro area, we do currently have engineering funded for the Lebanon bypass, um, which is, goes on the south side of Lebanon to the east side of Lebanon. And that's currently all we have included in our multi-year program. OK, cool. Thank you. From, from District 7, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, over, over here at District 7, we are currently in the Phase 1 process of the US-50 expansion uh, from west of Olney to the Indiana State Line. Uh, that Phase 1 should be done most likely early uh, early spring of 2017. We do have a, another uh, Phase 2 in the MYP in the later years, but at this point, uh, that's, kind of, that's pretty much where we're at. Phase, yeah, the phase two engineering in the outer years. Thank you. The next question, will the 55 and 355 interchange ever be finished to close slash restrict access to the redundant 355 southbound, the 55 southbound ramp that vehicles see through? It is also used for 55 to Joliet ramp instead of using the new ramp. That sounds like a Brian Carlson. Yeah. It is. Hi, right, Brian. Uh, well, the I-55-355 interchange was built by the Illinois State Toll Highway Authority when they uh, extended route, uh, or when they built route I-355. That is a, toll a tollway route. That is not an IDOT route. With respect to I-55, um, Chris mentioned in his presentation that we are doing the managed lane project that is going from 355 uh, east uh, into Chicago. Um, we are also initiating a study to look at um, modernizing the section of I-55 west of uh, 355 to accommodate the transition into the managed lanes. Uh, we are also looking at uh, various uh, bridge condition needs in that area. There's nothing programmed as far as uh, construction projects on the horizon. However, we are studying uh, the you know congestion mobility issues that exist in that segment. So currently, we have nothing uh, funded or planned to modify that interchange uh, pending the outcome of our studies. Thank you. The next question: well, When will be the next time that IDOT researches the U.S. Route 34 through Alcoma and Knox County? Would it be a good idea for Elkonia to be part of the safest streets program? And what all is involved and what advantages are there by being part of that program? Max County, that's, is that D2? D4? Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. OK, uh, sorry about that. Earlier, I was having some technical difficulties, and nobody could hear me. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, so uh, regarding US 34 in Knox County in Altona, um, that is a stretch of roadway that is identified as, as a project that we need to get into the program, and we're, we're trying to get it funded. Um, it is not currently in the program. And forgive me, I, I missed the rest rest of that question while I was trying to unmute my phone. The, uh, would it be a good idea for Alconia to be part of the Safest Streets program? And what all is involved and what advantages are there by being part of that program? This may be one that we need to get back to the, back to the question answer. Um, yeah. Yes, I, I, that's correct. I would say um, if we can get the information from the person that um, asked the question, we can uh, get them some details about the program. Definitely. Uh, we will also get back to Terry on the DAG question. We have not been able to get a hold of uh, Teresa, are you available to speak to the 336 bypass in Macomb or around Macomb? Yes. Um, that project uh, has a long history, and the uh, Macomb Area Chamber of Commerce, the Macomb City Council, McDonough County Board, uh, there was a lot of support for the project. Um, it is part of the 336. Um, corridor, and then there's the the US 67 um, corridor improvement uh, that spans several districts, and so it, it ties into that as well. And one of the reasons that we are only building, we are only paving the two lanes of that bypass right now is due to the budgetary constraints. So the um, the bypass will consist of a two-lane bypass um, uh, in the short term because of fiscal constraints. Thank you. The next question. With the new I-74 bridge, will there be multiple contracts let on the Illinois side or one large contract? This is District 2. On the Illinois side, there's actually three contracts. Two of the larger ones are for the bridges and the roadway, and then there's a third contract for landscaping. Thank you. The next was, what website will the slides be posted on? In the handout, there's a, a link to the MYP website. That is the website. Um, the, the first hyperlink that's on the handout to review the MYP, please, the MYP, please visit the event-related documents here. The slides will be posted on that website as well as the recording of this webinar. We have no further questions unless anyone wants to type some into the question uh, I just wanted to go ahead and reiterate that uh, we will be taking questions till November 30th. Uh, feel free to look in the handout. The URL that you see there can take you directly to an online form. Uh, it's new this year, going 100% digital. Uh, there is still written forms that you can get at your districts and district uh, program engineers. If, if we don't have a current copy of that, get a hold of me tomorrow and we'll send some out. Uh, so if you're in, the, uh, in a position to use a computer, feel free to fill out the online form. That's the fastest and easiest way for us to get back to you. Uh, if not, we'll uh, have written forms available at all the headquarters, uh, which you can mail in or just drop back off at the uh, coordinating headquarters. We do have another question. This one is for Brian. Why is the Lorenzo Road interchange being left up? Is it just being rebuilt in the last 10 to 15 years? Lorenzo Road at I-55. I'm sorry, I, you were breaking up. I, could you repeat the question, please? Sure. The question is, why are we looking at the Lorenzo Road interchange that was redone in the last 10 to 15 years? Lorenzo Road at I-55. Lorenzo, that section, um, the um, we've had significant increases in uh, intermodal traffic along that segment of I-55, 
and there is more intermodal development expected in the near future. Um, the interchange at 129 is currently closed because of uh, some of the um, uh, con structural conditions that were that were out there. Um, the project involves re uh, reconstructing the 129 and Lorenzo Road interchanges and providing auxiliary lanes uh, along I-55 mainline within that segment uh, to accommodate the increased uh, truck traffic resulting from the intermodal facilities. Uh, it's probably going to be something very similar to what we completed at I-55 at Arsenal Road where we have um, long auxiliary lanes which allow for acceleration, deceleration of the large trucks that will be uh, in and out of the intermodal facilities. So the, the project is to address not only current but uh, future intermodal traffic in that region. One more for you. Uh, a request for a side path on US-20 from Swiss Road to Medina Road. Request for a bypass on US-20 from where to where? Side path. An I pass. Side, side path. A side path. Oh, OK. On US-20 from where to where? From Swiss to Medina. Swift to Medina. Okay, I'm assuming that that's in the Bloomingdale, Medina area. Um, the um, our, our complete streets law in Illinois requires that we provide um, bicycle pedestrian accommodations in conjunction with um, uh, projects that involve altering the existing roadway condition. Uh, Route 20, um, we have no plans right now currently to uh, modify. Uh, the roadway configuration, therefore, we have no plans to provide any additional bicycle pedestrian accommodations, uh, such as a side path. Uh, we can certainly work with the municipalities in that area to seek alternative funding sources to um, implement that type of improvement independent of any uh, highway project. Uh, we're always receptive to uh, partnering with the local agencies on projects like that. but. Currently, we don't have anything in the program that would um, include the provision of that um, bicycle or pedestrian project along Route 20. But if uh, whoever is interested in that could uh, reach out and contact me at District 1, I can discuss those uh, options further. Thank you. Another question. Are there any mid to long-term plans to widen I-55 over the Des Plaines River? I-55 over Des Plaines River, um, the structure, we just recently spent about $10 million um, about two years ago rehabilitating those structures uh, to extend their service life. Um, eventually, the structures would be replaced, but that would be done as part of a future ad lane project capacity improvement along I-55. Currently, we do not have any uh, funding identified in our program to initiate engineering or uh, any construction of, uh, of any expansion on I-55 in that area. It is um, within our long-term priorities. Our, our district is currently wrapping up and coordinating with um, the Metropolitan Planning Organization, CMAP, in our region, a interstate priority plan which is going to uh, dovetail with the uh, update of the region's long-range plan, the ONTO 2050 plan. So we're looking currently at all of our expressway needs uh, in Northeast Illinois um, out to the year 2050. And that segment of I-55 is part of that overall plan, but it's not in the uh, first part of that plan, recognizing that we have other interstate priorities uh, in the region that are uh, higher than adding capacity to I-55 right now. And like I said, we just um, we just made a significant investment in rehabilitating the bridge to prolong the such time as we are able to add capacity and then replace the bridges at that time. Thank you. Another question. What kind of bridge work is being done on the bridge over the Mississippi River in Quincy? Jeffrey Myers? 
Yes, can you hear me? Go ahead. Yeah, this summer we had a repair contract to do some structural steel repairs. Uh, I think also the bridge joints. At this time we're studying the replacement of the Quincy Memorial Bridge. Uh, we don't have funding for the construction of that, but we are in phase one doing a study with the, uh, uh, using the CSS process, we do have an advisory group together on that project. Uh, we look to be holding a public meeting, I believe in December of this year for that project, talking about alternatives that we'll be carrying forward. Thank you very much. That is the last of the questions. You can always submit questions on our website, and we appreciate your time, and thank you for participating. Have a good night. Go Cubs.